What do Nikola Tesla, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jochen Rindt have in common? They're all from here, Graz, and so is another company we're going to talk about today that you might not know so much about. They're the complete 360 degree outfit. They have huge clients in international motorsport. We are talking, of course, about AVL. We've come to AVL Racing to get an understanding of how integrated they are to motorsport and what their view is on how the future of motorsport is being shaped. AVL is a company that has been involved in the automotive and motorsport sectors for over 70 years, particularly with its AVL racing division, and it can cover every conceivable form of engineering that you can possibly think of. We're going to break it down into five key segments, simulate, engineer, make, test and race. These are the five segments that make up AVL's comprehensive service offer. Now the first thing that we're going to be talking about here today is simulation. Simulation is a hugely important tool in modern engineering and AVL's own in-house simulator software is a huge benefit to many of the racing teams that it supplies. AVL has a massive simulation base that really helps out a lot of teams in motorsport and I'm here with Mike Suffer who is able to tell me about a few things about simulation. So Mike, uh, good to see you and why is simulation so important to these racing teams? Simulation in general is important to all uh, developers in the automotive industry, but uh, the particular importance for racing is because the time between the seasons is very short. So if you really want to move something forward, you have to look into many different variants, investigate different designs, and there's not always time to build hardware and to prove on the hardware that things are working. So simulation offers you to investigate lots of parameters, to pick out the best and to move forward. And so what are the sort of challenges that you faced uh, within AVL? Yeah, of course, it wasn't the case that we uh, one day woke up and everyone was crying for simulation helping out. <laughs> <laughs> um, it took us quite a while to position the simulation tools, the simulation methodologies uh, in a way that it's well accepted. Uh, but I think we are, these days, we are there with the strong support of our colleagues in all the departments and with the strong support of Professor List himself, who is a strong uh, proponent of simulation. And so where is AVL racing now? What sort of things are you looking at? Everything around the car. Of course, aerodynamics is a, vo a very important um, topic for racing teams. Um, but also engine development itself. We are looking deep into, inside the combustion chamber, uh, seeing how fuel sprays are propagating, um, performance develops, combustion, thermal load. These topics are very hot and, and we are trying our best to, to produce answers to the questions the engineers have. And so over the next few years, do you see these sort of physical worlds and these virtual worlds kind of merging a little bit? Uh, not a little bit. I definitely see this already today. So um, as we just spoke, a couple of years back, uh, everyone was looking at hardware, working on the hardware and simulation was on the outside. But nowadays, uh, uh, simulation is running on the test beds already. And this means uh, we are verifying things by using simulation tools. So hardware is verified by simulation. So it's definitely the case that things will come closer together and I see this ongoing already today. And so what are some examples of that where they're really coming together? Yeah, let's look into the combustion chamber, for example. It's the case that hardware testbeds are used to validate simulation tools, but at one point uh, you can't uh, continue hardware testing. So if you think about race engines running up to 20,000 RPM, it's really difficult to look into them with measurement equipment. Uh, even if you have uh, video cameras enabling you to use very high frame rates uh, so that you can, can record under these engine running conditions, uh, the manipulation of the test would be so difficult that actually any recording would be useless. So only the simulation provides you the insight into the chamber without disturbing uh, the design itself. And so we're living in a world that's just massively evolving with regards to technology. What's the future for simulation for you? Mm. Uh, simulation and the real world will, will merge together and, and people will uh, believe in the one or the other in the same way. Yeah. So I can't imagine that our future, whatever we can think of, whether it's a race engine, a race car or any other uh, product we are able to buy or to, to, to own, 
uh, is developed without doing any simulation. I really can't imagine this in the future. So we're here in just one of the many test beds in AVL and critical to the development of any part in any industry at all, quality engineering is needed. Now I'm here with engineer Michael Pinesit, who's going to take us through the tricky and tireless art of engineering at AVL. So at AVL, what's the company's main influence in, uh, in motorsport engineering? Yeah, this is one of our test beds and actually the one we are standing in is specifically dedicated to racing. Not only to racing, but it has been made fit for the purpose of racing. In this test bed, we can test all different sorts of components up to the full vehicle, as you can see. I think the unique offering that we have here on this test bed is that if the full vehicle is installed here on the test bed, we can connect it to the driving simulator. So that means we have a real driver in the driving simulator driving the car here on the test bed. In other words, if the driver on the driving simulator jumps on the brakes, the real brakes of the car will slow it down here on the test bed. So this is actually as close as it gets to real track testing without actually going on the track. Speaking about test beds, we have quite a few of them here uh, in our headquarters in Graz. And we offer all different sorts of uh, tailored testing solutions to our customers, from a component test up to a full vehicle test. Um, we have quite uh, a lot of experience in doing these things and we have the hardware and the engineering capability to offer really tailored solutions to the point for our customers. Hold up, we're still in Austria, we need to be in Germany for the next bit. AVL Schrick, about an hour away from Dusseldorf, provides the facility to actually build all of the parts that they engineer with the top teams in motorsport. We spoke to Fabian Wenzel on how they manage the demand from the teams and how AVL managed to cope with getting the parts made that even the teams can't quite manage. At first it is absolute dedication of all our 130 employees here at AVL Schrick for racing. And since racing parts mostly are time critical, we can immediately start the production process with programming once we have got the final data from our customer. Nearly all production steps can be done in-house on our high-end machine inventory and with these facilities we are capable to produce engine parts, chassis parts, suspension parts and also aero parts. To give you one concrete example, um, we can produce a camshaft totally in-house so we can perform the pre-grinding, the lobe and journal grinding, the inductive hardening, which is a process we've totally done in-house and developed in-house, up to the super finishing. And we perform a 100% in-house quality assurance covering dimensional and optical measurements. And it's not just Germany, AVL have these bases all around the world. So no matter your location, you can pick up a spec part around the globe. AVL's size and global orientation results in comprehensive tech centers with local contact persons to ensure the best service for all our customers worldwide. Everyone working in the racing branch knows that you do it by passion, so I think that's a good motivation to sometimes go the one or other extra mile at AVL Trick. So confidentiality is critical to maintaining that working relationship, as you can obviously see. So just how secretive are some of the projects? Since we mostly produce prototypes, pre-series parts and completely customized racing parts, nearly all projects here are highly confidential. And confidentiality is one of the core aspects to strengthen our position in the global market as a trustworthy supplier and to build a strong and professional relation with our racing customers. As you can see, to protect our customers, nearly all parts here are covered, except of our own tuning products and official contracts. And how does it feel to be part of this bigger team and seeing what you've done hit the track? Being one of the first persons seeing these parts manufactured here and knowing that these parts are going in all different race cars, racing all the different race tracks all over the world is just insane. Knowing that you can see the parts or the cars racing at the weekend and probably um, being part of the winning team is just awesome. And with that, let's get back to Graz in Austria to continue our journey with AVL. If you want to take anything onto the track or onto the market, it needs to be tested and it needs to be tested repeatedly. 
Those test processes have to be rigorous, they have to be intense, and they have to account for every single scenario. Luckily, I'm joined by a man who's able to do that. I'm here with Matthias Dank, who is the Head of Race Test Operations at AVL. Matthias, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me here. So, what kind of tests can AVL provide to its clients? Uh, we can provide test systems for uh, our different kind of scenarios, uh, meaning you can start with the entire vehicle and bring it successively down uh, to the individual component. So we can start from the car to the engine to the driveline down to the brakes and the tires and use every component in between just like bearings or individual gear, gear stages. And so what would you say is an example of that? So if you could pick a component, for example, what kind of test processes would you take it through? I think the prime example at the moment is something like bearing or individual gear stages because with hybrid or with electrified powertrains, efficiency uh, in production cars, but as well in motorsports, is the topic of the utmost importance. Uh, and you can find out the efficiency within the smallest components. So bearing, which is one of the latest developments that we have done, is a bespoke bearing test rig. Fantastic. So how would you see AVL fitting in within the future of motorsport? Which direction do you think it will go in? Uh, AVL in the future of motorsport, depending on, on where the future of motorsport is going. I'm on the one side quite certain that motorsport will stick around in the entertainment industry. I mean, mankind has always loved to race their transport, maybe on foot, on bicycles, uh, on horses, on ships, on planes, or on motor cars or uh, motorcycles. And Avel's role is there where we are currently at the moment, being a partner for our customers, which are the teams, which manufacturers, but is, uh, at the same time are the governing bodies, and providing tools, services, systems, and products throughout all their fields of development, testing and operations finally at the racetrack. We're moving on to another part of test now, Pietzacrist, where working to a tolerance of micrometers, sometimes even nanometers, is not uncommon. Within AVL is the Pietzacrist company and they deal with all manner of things such as high pressure sensors and quite a lot more. I'm here with Michael Herschler. Michael, what's Pietzacrist all about? Yeah, Pietro Christ is a member of the AVL company specialized in developing and producing especially Piezo sensors, meaning for pressure, for torque, for acceleration, but mainly for pressure. And we are really doing our own crystals here, breeding them in a very unique way. But apart from that, we also have our own micro-mechanical production, which allows us to produce components in the range of a few millimeters and with a precision of 0.2 micrometers, you always have to imagine that the hair of a human person is about 80 micrometer thick. So it's really small tolerances which are necessary to produce onboard sensors which are not only precise enough for all modern closed loop state of the art control algorithms, but they are also built in a way that they simply never fail. So even if you operate them a long time, even if they break, they still work, they still give a good result. And that's important because then you can use it without any doubt in, in racing. And apart from that, of course, our uh, micromechanic production um, is used for offering components, customer-specific components to some customers. And so when it comes to growing your own crystals, uh, it's all done in-house uh, and it's all done it's, to your specifications? It's, it's really done here, so it's unique, the crystal, so nobody else in the world can really breed it. It's only done for this purpose and only done in this location here. So that's just part of AVL's comprehensive service offer. And join us next time where we'll be looking further into the testing and racing segments.